The action of the play takes place in a village square above which rises a hill. The narrow houses of New Moon Street have pointed roofs and red chimneys. The only props on stage are a small bench up center and a street lamp down right at the end of the street. The time sequence, which covers several days, will be indicated only by lighting and the music of the bells, which we hear when the clock in the tower strikes the hours. The village clock strikes seven as the curtains open on the dusk of the village square. After a moment, the lamplighter enters with long staff. As he lights the street lamp, the stage light creeps up a little. Circling from the rear of the audience to the front stage down right, ringing his bell and chanting. Town meeting tonight. Town meeting tonight. Town meeting tonight. Stopping down center stage and turning to Kriya. What good is a town meeting when the giant Hunde sits above our village and curses it? What can we do? He has plundered the villages of the far countryside. And today the earth shook when he strode onto our hillside. He pulled up four trees to make room to sit down. And when he called us, our doors shook and our windows rattled. What demands has he made? The town clerk has gone to hear Hunde's will. We meet now to hear his demands. He continues off down left and around back of audience, his bell ringing softly. Town meeting tonight. Town meeting tonight. The lamplighter stays on stage and is joined now by the line of villagers who follow the town clerk from rear of the audience onto stage from down right. The crier has circled the auditorium and has joined the rear of the procession. As he enters, carrying scroll and quill and takes his place on the bench up center. There are 99 other men in the town, but it's the town clerk this and the town clerk that, and the town clerk everything. The villagers, who are town councillors, arrange themselves in small groups. They mutter and whisper to each other. Quillo has followed them in and sits cross-legged on the edge of the stage, down far right. Town meeting will come to order. Town meeting will come to order. They quiet down. I will now call the roll. We're all here. You can see that. As each name is called, the councillors answer impatiently. Tailor, butcher, candy maker, blacksmith, baker, candle maker, lamplighter, Cobbler, carpenter, locksmith, town crier. He looks over his spectacles at Quillu. We have a visitor tonight, as usual. All turn and look amusedly at Quillu. Quillu, the toy maker. Unrolling scroll. We come now to the business of the day. I have heard the demands of Hunde the giant. The document is most irregular. It does not contain a single greeting or whereas or be it known by these presents. I, Hunde, must have three sheep every morning. All three sheep. Why that would use up all the sheep in the valley in a week and a fortnight, and there would be no mutton for our own people. I, Hunde, must have a chocolate a day as high and as wide as a spinning wheel. General Dismay. Why, that would exhaust all the chocolate in my storeroom in three days. I, Hunde, must have a new jerkin made for me in a week and a fortnight. And it would take me night and day to make such a pie, so that I could bake no more pies or cakes or cookies, or blueberry muffins or cinnamon buns or cherry boats or strawberry tarts or plum puddings for the people of the town. I, Hunde, must have a house to live in by a week and a fortnight. Why, I would have to work night and day to build a house for so large a giant in a week and a fortnight. And all my nephews and uncles and cousins would have to help me, and it would use up all the wood and pegs and hinges and glass in my shop and in the countryside. I will have to work night and day to make a brass key large enough to fit the keyhole in the front door of the house of so large a giant. It will use all the brass in my shop and in the community. And I will have to make a candle for his bedside so large, it will use up all the wick and tallow in my shop and world. This is the final item. 
I, Hunde, must be told a tale each day to keep me amused. The counselors go out slowly and sadly, muttering about their heavy tasks of the night. Quillu sits alone thinking. Suddenly his face lightens. He pantomimes the suggestion or the droll he is going to make. He skips off gleefully as the lights dim to off. The only lights on the stage now is that of the street lamp. The town clock strikes five and the lamplighter enters and puts out the street light as the stage lights rise for morning. S.H. Don't wake the giant. S.H. His food may not be ready. Five o'clock and all's well. He circles to the rear of the audience, softly, the villagers tiptoe on, wearily carrying their foodstuffs. They line up across the front of the stage, backs to the audience, facing the hill with the sleeping giant. The pie is baked. The chocolate is made. The sheep are dressed. I worked all night on the great brass key. I helped him with my hammer and anvil. I have scarcely begun the enormous candle. I am weary of sawing and playing. My fingers are already stiff and I have just started the giant's jerkin. My eyes are tired and I have hardly begun to make his boots. Where is Quillo? Where is that foolish little fellow? He was in shop at midnight making toys. Toys. He could have helped with the key. The pie. The sheep. The boots. Quillo appears smiling and bowing. Well, good morning. I worked all night with my hammer and anvil helping the locksmith with the great brass key. The lamplighter tells us you spend the night making toys. Making toys and thinking up a tale to amuse the giant Hunde. Hunde. Awakening, his head and shoulders appear above the hillside, up center. Ho, ho. He claps his hands and the villagers fall backwards. He roars with laughter. Bring me my pie, my chocolate. The villagers look their foodstuffs across the stage, climb on the bench, and heave them up to the giant. Tell me your silly names and what you do. Hunter gnaws greedily at his food as the villagers quickly tell their trades, each bowing as he speaks. You, you with the white hair, who are you? I'm Quillo, the teller of tales. Bo. Scowls with fury, then suddenly laughs. You are a fairly droll fellow. Perhaps your tales will amuse me. If they do not, I will put you in the palm of my hand and blow you so far it will take men five days to find you. Now the rest of you, be off to your work. The villagers sneak off in terror, as Handa continues to eat. Now, you tell me Utale. Sits cross-legged. Once upon a time, a giant came to our town from a thousand leagues away, stepping over the hills and rivers. He was so mighty a giant, that he could stamp upon the ground with his foot and cause the cows in the fields to turn flip-flops in the air and land on their feet again. Graf, I can stamp upon the ground with my foot and empty a lake of its water. I have no doubt of that, O oh Hunde. But the giant who came over the hills and rivers many years ago was a lesser giant than Hunde. He was weak. He fell ill of a curious malady. Rof, that giant was a goose, that giant was grasshopper. Hunde is never sick. Smites his chest. This other giant had no ailment of the chest or the stomach or the mouth or the ears or the eyes or the arms or the legs. Where else can a giant have an ailment? In the mind, for the mind is a strange and intricate thing. In lesser men than Hunde, it is subject to mysterious maladies. Wumph, Hunde's mind is strong like the rock. Smites his forehead. No one to this day knows what brought on this dreadful disease in the mind of the other giant. He suffered no pain. His symptoms were marvelous and dismaying. First he heard the word. For fifteen minutes one morning, beginning at a quarter to six, he heard the word. Harumph, what was the word the giant heard for fifteen minutes one day? The word was woodly. All words were one word to him. All words were woodly. All words are different to Hunde. 
And do you call this a tale you have told me? A blithering goose of a giant hears a word and you call that a tale to amuse him there? I hear all words. This is a good chocolate. Otherwise I would put you in the palm of my hand and blow you over the house tops. As the town clock strikes 6. I shall bring you a better tale tomorrow. No one knows to this day what caused the weird illness in the mind of the other giant. Hunter growls, yawns, and sinks his great head onto his arms and goes to sleep. Quillo smiles and goes to down stage right. Calling softly. Town crier, town crier. The town crier tiptoes on. Call the people. Tell them Quillo has a plan to destroy the giant Honda. Call them quietly. Circling the audience and crying softly. Town meeting in the village square. Town meeting in. As the light dims into dusk, the villagers enter quietly and form a group around Quillo. What is the clown's whim that brings us here like sheep? Quillo whispers to the group. They nod and whisper to each other conspiratorially. It will never work. It is worth trying. I have a better plan. Let all the women and all the children stand in the streets and gaze sorrowfully at the giant and perhaps he will go away. Let us try Quillo's plan. He has a magic, the little man. The lights dim to off. The villagers quietly move to either side of the stage and sit. As the lights rise for morning, the villagers are discovered in their places with Quillo sitting cross-legged on the bench below the hillside, awakening with great noises. Tell me a tale, smallest of men, and see to it that I do not nod or I shall put you in the palm of my hand and blow you through yonder cloud. Once upon a time there was a king named Andablus Diarifin and he had three sons named Ophabrodoborob, Condorodlondre and Tristel Comforisi. Why did this king and his sons have such a long and difficult names? Ah, it was because of this king's mother whose name was Isilda Sadlefandelu. One day as the king and his sons were riding through the magical forest they came upon a wadily 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 wadily. Say it with words. You say nothing but wadily. Wadily 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 wadily. Can this malady come upon me or do you seek to frighten Hunde? Wadily wadily wadily. Wadily wadily wadily. In terror, shouts at the villagers. He points to each one as he asks a question and grows more and more horrified as each one answers his questions with woodly, woodly. You blacksmith, tell me your name. To another. What is the time of day? Where are you going? How are you feeling? All talk, all talk. Say words. The villagers carry on conversations with each other using the words woodly. silencing them with his roaring it is the malady i have heard the word it is the malady what am i to do to cure the malady the town clock strikes 6 i was telling you how the king and his three sons rode through the magical forest i heard the word all men said the word what word wadily that is but the first symptom and it has passed look at the chimneys of the town are they not red Yes, the chimneys are red. Why do you ask if the chimneys are red? So long as the chimneys are red, you have no need to worry, for when the second symptom is upon you, the chimneys of the town turn black. I see only red chimneys, but what could have caused Hunde to hear the word? As the lights dim. Rest well. I will tell you another tale tomorrow. As Hunde goes to sleep, Quillo signals to the villagers. They quietly move to the chimneys which they pretend to paint. They remove the red cutouts and when they have finished and have returned to their places the lights come up again for morning. Stirs, rubs eyes, yawns, stretches and then stares. The chimneys, the chimneys are black. The malady is upon me again. Teller of tales, tell me what I must do. The chimneys are black. Look teller of tales name may fairly the color of yonder chimneys The chimneys are red oh hunde the chimneys are red see how they outdo the red rays of the sun The rays of the sun are red but the chimneys of the town are black You tremble and your tongue hangs out and those are indeed the signs of the end
cries in anguish the world is full of black chimneys you have begun to shrink like the brook in dry weather and that is the sign of the third symptom shaking with terror the sea the sea point me to the sea it is many leagues to the east run quickly towards the rising sun and bathe in the yellow waters in the middle of the sea bellowing with anguish hunter disappears behind his hillside as his roaring diminishes the villagers enter lifting quillo to their shoulders the great quillo 